In the days before personal computers, a document was nothing more than a printed page. If it referenced another document, it did so with static text, and it was up to you to look up the reference. But with the popularity of the Internet, readers have come to expect clickable hyperlinks that take them to relevant information. And Microsoft Word makes it easy to insert these links into your documents. By default, when you type a website or email address, Word turns it into a clickable link. But sometimes you want more control over what you link to and how it's displayed. For this, you need the Insert Hyperlink dialog box. It lets you link to a variety of targets, set the display text, and even add a screen tip to your link. You're editing a document and you want readers to be able to easily reference another part of it. You'll add a hyperlink to do this. You also want to be able to quickly access a web page from your document, so you'll add a hyperlink to do this as well. Creating a link from one part of a document to another is a common task, especially with longer documents. This document is broken into four parts. We want to link the first part, the introduction, to the third part, limitations. Let's start by setting the location, or anchor, for our link. At the end of the second sentence are the words, see limitations, in parentheses. Let's select the word we want to use as a hyperlink. Now that it's selected, let's create the hyperlink. To access the links group, click the Insert tab. The links group has three different tools for creating cross-references, bookmarks, or hyperlinks. Cross-references are similar to hyperlinks, but can only link to points within your document, and they don't share the easily recognizable formatting style Word applies to hyperlinks. The bookmark tool lets us create custom internal targets for our links, and the hyperlink button opens the Insert Hyperlink dialog box. At the top, the Insert Hyperlink dialog box shows us the text we highlighted. This is the text that will be made clickable. If we change that text here, it will change the text in the document when we close the dialog box. On the left, we can select the type of link we want to add. We want to create an internal link within the document, so we can select Place in this document. This gives us a view of the document in outline form, displaying all possible targets, which include headings and bookmarks. This document has no bookmarks, but it was formatted with headings. Let's select the third one, Limitations. The target is set. Before creating the link, we could use the Target Frame button to tell Word whether to open the link in the same document window or in a new one. For this link, we'll use the default behavior and stay in the same window. So let's click OK to insert our link. Word applies the default hyperlink style, which is blue and underlined. Move the mouse pointer over the link to see the screen tip. This displays the generic screen tip, which tells us what to do in order to follow the link. It also tells us it links to a place within this document. What if we wanted to customize the screen tip? To edit any aspect of a hyperlink, simply right-click on it for a shortcut menu. This opens a menu with a number of options, but the most important ones are the option to remove the hyperlink, which will leave the unlinked text in place, and the option to edit the hyperlink. Let's select Edit Hyperlink. This opens the Edit Hyperlink dialog box. This dialog box is virtually identical to the Insert Hyperlink dialog box, but it opens with our specific link information loaded and ready to edit. We want to customize the screen tip, so in the upper right corner, click the Screen Tip button. This opens the Set Hyperlink Screen Tip dialog box, where we can specify what our readers will see when they move their mouse over our link. Remember to keep your screen tips short and simple. Ours looks pretty good, so let's add it to the link.
Let's see what happens when we move the mouse pointer over the hyperlink now. Our screen tip displays along with the instructions on how to follow the link. In the actual application environment, your mouse pointer will change to a pointing hand when you press the control key before clicking the link. The cursor jumps to the third heading, Limitations. Let's add a new link. We want to give our readers the chance to explore the ideas in this document further. To do so, we'll add a hyperlink at the end of the document that will link them to a website with more information. The final section, Additional Reading, ends with the words, Click Here. We want to turn the word Here into a hyperlink. Let's begin by double-clicking the word Here to select it. Do you remember which button you need to click to start inserting a hyperlink? This time, we'll select the Existing File or Web Page option. This option allows us to create a link to an existing file or a web page. This selection changes the dialog box into something similar to the Open dialog box. From here, we can browse for a file to link to. But we want to link to a web page, so we'll use the Address field. You can click the Address down arrow to select a page from Internet Explorer's history, copy and paste a URL into the text box, or simply type the URL you want to use. We'll use the last method. Click Next and we'll type the URL for you. This is the web address we want to use in the link. Now let's add a screen tip that will be useful to our users. Remember that you'll want to keep your screen tip short and to the point. Let's add something to let our readers know we can offer them some help. We're ready to add this screen tip to our hyperlink. It's always a good idea to test your hyperlinks to make sure they work, so let's give this one a try. Clicking the link opened our web browser and took us right to the web page we wanted. Links are essential when sharing external files, related web items, or internal document references. And there's no special coding involved. Word makes it as easy as a couple of clicks. 